Hello, everyone at the Virtual Student Watershed Watch Summit. My name is Andrew Sankowski, and I'm going to talk to you all today about the work that I do as a water resources engineer. Uh, so I'm going to share a little bit of a presentation as I go along. And I'm going to start by just giving you a little bit of information about my background. So I grew up in Toledo. I attended Central Catholic High School, and I never participated in the Student Watershed Watch myself. I look back on it and I think that would have been a great opportunity to learn and get a good grasp of what's going on in these environmental fields. And I think you guys all have that great first step by participating in this. And you'll definitely look back and be happy that you did. Um, but I did get interested in uh, sustainability in terms of our waters in high school when I, when I did a science fair project about uh, pollution in Lake Erie. And then when I went to college at the University of Virginia and I majored in civil engineering, um, I took more classes about water. And in 2014, while I was in school, the Toledo water price happened. And um, the, the topic of algal blooms really was coming up again in significance in Lake Erie. And that really solidified my interest and, and desire to kind of work on those problems and be a part of uh, making sustainable solutions for our waters to protect them. So I wanted to take a moment to give you all a brief overview of what a water resources engineer is. And I wanted to start off by saying that water resources engineers can be a lot of different things. And it depends who you might ask or where you might be as to what they might tell you. Um, as you can see here, I've just kind of listed a lot of the different ways in which you can practice water resources engineering. But I'm really gonna focus today on what I do in terms of water resources engineering, which is mainly focused on those two middle things. Um, which is basically stormwater management, how, how we deal with the water that falls onto our land when it rains and, and what we do with that to protect uh, human infrastructure and our natural environment around us. So to go into some more specifics about the work that I do as a water resources engineer, like I said, most of the work that I do is focused on managing stormwater and its impacts to our environment and, and the infrastructure around us. So that's basically broken down into two areas and we talk about those areas as water quality and water quantity. So water quality deals with the impacts to the environment due to pollution and degradation of waterways as a result of that stormwater runoff. So you're probably familiar that um, stormwater runoff is a leading source of pollution in our waterways and can carry off a lot of pollutants. Some of the things that you might have sampled uh, during your activities for this student watershed watch like nitrogen and phosphorus um, into our waterways and can cause significant degrad degradation and impairment of those waterways um, due to unmanaged stormwater runoff. So we do a lot of different things to manage water quality. Uh, things like green stormwater infrastructure, which involves designing practices to manage stormwater in a natural way um, that enhances the quality of that water and also enhances the environment wherever that practice is placed. Um, an example of something like this might be a rain garden you might be familiar with, but there are also larger scales, there are wetland restorations. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can apply green infrastructure in, in neat and, and really exciting and fun ways. Um, another big element that I work on is stream restoration design, which is just taking degraded streams, which there are a lot of degraded streams around anywhere that we've had human impact, which is pretty much everywhere and restoring those to a more natural and stable state, so that way they're not uh, actively eroding and degrading and that they provide enough habitat and floodplain connection to really uh, enhance the natural environment. And then I also work on erosion and sediment control, which is basically making sure that construction sites uh, don't pollute our waterways by letting uh, all the disturbed soils run off into those bodies of water. Uh, so those are kind of the big areas of water quality that I work on, and I, I really enjoy working on that. But in terms of water quantity, this is usually a little bit less environmentally focused, so I won't take as much time to focus on it. Um, but I do want to note that it is slightly environmentally focused and it is definitely related. Um, so it's a big part of the picture. But basically water quantity is just dealing with managing the volume the, of water that runs off of our, of our surfaces uh, when it rains. And so the volume of water can cause flooding issues and that's, that's typically the main concern. Overall, it's just a general picture of what I do is I try to work on projects that work on managing stormwater in a way that is sustainable and prevents impacts to all of, all of the things around us, including our, our roads, bridges, homes, and the environment. Um, so that's generally what I do as a water resources engineer. 
So I just want to take a moment to talk about the Chesapeake Bay, which is really where most of the work that I do is centered around. Um, so the Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the United States, and it's experienced a lot of water quality issues over, over time, and it's still going through a lot of water quality issues. But there's a massive restoration effort that's going on that's based on total maximum daily loads that have been set by the EPA. Um, and that's basically, sometimes they call that a pollution diet. So there have been certain numbers of pollutants that have been determined to be what is the most amount of pollution that can go into the bay while still maintaining its health. And so basically what we do as, as part of our projects is we try to reduce pollution to meet those goals so that way the bay isn't getting more pollution than it can handle. Um, so it's really, I mean, just like a diet in any other way, uh, we need to reduce those numbers to a sustainable a level that can be handled. And once we get it there, we still have to keep it there for a long time, for, I mean, permanently afterwards, so that way its health can be maintained. Um, and so the restoration of the Chesapeake Bay is kind of one of the biggest and, and, um, and on the leading edge of large scale watershed restorations. And so it's really exciting to work on. But a really neat thing about this that I kind of want to point out is that all the work that we do is, is really based on this Chesapeake Bay, but this work is all really relevant to a lot of other areas. And the Western Basin of Lake Erie is really a great analog to the Chesapeake Bay. And I think a lot of the work that's been done in Chesapeake Bay is starting to happen and has been happening in the Western Basin of Lake Erie. So there's a lot of crossover between a lot of different places. And the work that we do as water resources engineers is relevant really worldwide. And that's a really exciting part of the job is that we know that we can kind of apply this everywhere and what we learn in one place can be taken somewhere else and done to enhance the water quality elsewhere. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a brief overview of what, what type of work I do in my daily life as a water resources engineer. So like I said, most of my work is focused on either water quality or quantity management, usually both at the same time. And that work is really all driven by trying to meet uh, water quality goals in the Chesapeake Bay. And so what we do typically is we're working on design or analysis of sites that have various issues that we're either trying to design a solution to or to analyze and see what, what potential issues are there. Um, so most of the work that we do is from the office. Um, it, there's a little bit of a field work component and it kind of varies from project to project as to how often you get out, sometimes a lot more, sometimes less but everything is really based on working on a physical site. So there's always that element to it. And I really enjoy that part of the job. But when we're in the office, we spend a lot of time working in CAD. And when we're doing that, we're drafting plans. So that way, whatever we're designing can be built. Um, we also work in GIS, which are geographic information systems. So that's just a way to spatially get information about the areas that we're working. Uh, we also do a lot of calculations. Um, I wouldn't say that the math is too hard, just in case that's a concern for you. Um, it's probably, I would say, complicated algebra at the hardest is usually what we do. And we're doing that work usually in spreadsheets um, that we're making up. But we also have some more complicated uh, mathematical processes that we work through. And we do those usually in um, specialized computer software programs that, you, that you'll learn as you move forward in this, in this field. Um, and then once we, you know, finish all of our designs and analyses, we, we always write reports and come up with documentation and exhibits to support whatever we've done um, and present to our clients. So that's another significant part of our work. So generally, the project usually is just a, getting a problem and then working towards a solution, presenting it, getting feedback, and then going back and, and iteratively refining the design to get to the final product. Um, and so that's what we do generally in the daily life. And I came up with a list of skills that I thought would be helpful to be a water resources engineer and that you, you maybe, maybe would make you well suited for this job. And I realized that pretty much all of the skills I came up with would make you well suited to do about any job. And so I think it's great <laughs> if you do have those skills. But um, I do think that one thing that I, that I kind of came to a conclusion on with this was that I, th I think that uh, really, really having a problem solving mentality suit, will suit you well for engineering if you really want to go and come up with a tangible solution to a problem. And especially if you like 
working on something kind of physical. Now you're not, you're not really building things with your hands, but if you want to be able to go and, and come up with a solution and then go a couple months later and say, ah, oh, look at that right, right there. That, that was, that was something that I designed. Um, civil engineering can really be the a great field for that. And, and I really enjoy that about the field, but even more, I think having a passion for water and the environment and, and kind of public service can be really beneficial skills that can make the work very satisfying to you um, because you'll really care about the work that you're doing and not, not that every project all the time is, is the most satisfying thing ever, but you, you really know that what you're working towards part of a large effort um, and, and you're, and you're making a positive change and that that's really satisfying. It can be a really great motivation to keep doing great work in this field. And so I want us to take a minute to just briefly talk about the future challenges that we're facing that water resources engineers are going to need to solve. So just an overview of if you were to get into this field, these are the types of things that you, you would be working on. And these are all really pressing issues. Um, and we're working on solving a lot of these right now, and, and we're going to need to keep working on them. Um, so just the first thing is agricultural runoff pollution. And you're probably familiar that this is the leading cause of pollution in Lake Erie and in most watersheds uh, around the world. 90% um, of the pollutant loads into Lake Erie come from agricultural runoff, and we're working on establishing a lot of best management practices in our agricultural areas, um, but we obviously need to do a lot more to keep implementing those and to improve and then to keep those up. Uh, there's also urban stormwater pollution and flooding, uh, so that's kind of just the other side of the coin. Um, we also have a lot of infrastructure that's getting old in this country and is going to be replaced or upgraded. Um, so that's going to be a, a, an area of work that will be worked on for quite a while. And then the final one that I want to point out is climate change. And this one is a little bit complicated because we don't know exactly what will happen. So we're kind of just anticipating things. Um, but we definitely anticipate that precipitation patterns are going to change. And that's going to lead to uh, more pollution, more flooding, but kind of at different times probably, just not what we've been dealing with historically, which is gonna make us need to be much more adaptive in the way that we manage our water. Um, we're also expecting extreme storm events to happen more frequently, which again, is gonna to lead to more flooding. And then in areas where we have combined sewers, more extreme events means more potential for combined sewer overflows, which is something we really wanna avoid. And we've worked hard to avoid, but if things are gonna get worse, we're gonna to have to work harder. Um, also, in the Great Lakes, water levels are going to keep fluctuating pretty drastically, we, we expect. Um, so there's going to be a lot of increased shoreline erosion and just dealing with the fact of we don't know what the water level will be from year to year, and, and that has a lot of impacts. Um, and also, as the air temperatures increase, and uh, we're going to expect the water temperatures to increase too, and so that's going to uh, really uh, add to potential algal bloom problems because the algae likes warmer water. Um, so there are a lot of impacts that are associated with climate change that we're going to have to work on as water resources engineers and just in general things that we're going to have to work on as water resources engineers to solve a lot of problems. And I think the really cool thing is, is, is a lot of the work that we do is really focused on natural solutions and trying to mimic the way that nature handles these things. Um, and that's really fascinating. And so I just wanted to conclude by briefly saying that um, I think all the work that I do as a water resources engineer is really, really um, motivated by the significance of water. Obviously water is essential to human life. And you know, like that's, that's true on a physical level, but, but also when I you know, look through my camera roll here, just a couple of pictures that I, I briefly scanned through and pulled out, but obviously water is such a central element to the way we live our lives. And, and it's so important to us. It's, it's so important and um, it's so significant. So uh, to me, there's just a very clear reason why we need to be good stewards of our water. And I think pretty much everyone can, can understand that feeling. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for you all today. Uh, if you do have any questions about what it's like being a water resources engineer, um, please feel free to contact me. My email is my name, Andrew Sankowski at gmail.com. I'd be happy to answer any questions or talk to you about anything. Um, and I, like I said, I think you guys are all on a great step forward on a path. If you want to follow an environmental career or just in general, I think you're on a great step forward into learning more about our water resources by participating in this. So thank you all for doing that. And I hope you all have a great rest of your summit.